Hey there everyone, Vaish here, back again with another video and welcome back to the Docker series. In this video, we're going to talk about the life cycle of a Docker image from how it is being pulled up from the hub of Docker, as well as how it runs, how it gets shut down, and what other phases of the life it can move into. And also we are going to learn about two more commands of the Docker. As the series will progress, you will get familiarized with more such commands. So we're gonna proceed gradually onto that, nothing to be worried about. So let's get started and talk about this. First and foremost, my terminal looks a little bit different from the previous terminals. You don't have to worry anything about that. Whatever you see from here to here, it's just totally an optional thing. You don't have to worry about anything. These are system defaults. It can be varied into different things, into Linux, into Mac, just like that. So first and foremost, make sure your Docker is up and running. The good way of verifying it by just saying Docker version, and there we go, we are able to find our version. So the two commands that we are gonna talk about is uh, docker ps and docker ps all. First and foremost, I'm gonna talk more onto that. So when you run the docker, we have seen that when we run the hello world or the docker busy box, we can actually run these images. So how long these images are gonna be running? Are they running in the background, consuming some of the resources? This all can be verified by using this command docker ps. So as we can see, right now we don't have any image running, neither the hello world, neither the busy box. So if I run this command that says docker ps, I just see some of the empty headers. Uh, these are meant to be on the very top of my terminal, but because it is so zoomed up, that's why you don't see anything just below them. So if I try to just uh, zoom out a little bit, I guess I can fit them into just one line but don't worry, I'll, I'll zoom it out. So this is how it was supposed to be, but right now it's not like that. So I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit because zooming in is actually better and helps us to just see things better. Okay, moving further, since we don't have any process running, but in the past we have run a couple of processes on the Docker image. So how do we, how can we find that? We can add one more command, which is Docker PS, and then we have to run hyphen hyphen all. So let me go ahead. That's actually just not one hyphen. Those are two hyphen. So hyphen hyphen all. And when I just run this command, now I can see there has been a lot going on. And in order to understand, I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, make sure that you are also watching these videos in the highest possible resolution so that you can see all of that in just one line. Let me fit all of this in one line. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but I'm gonna try my best. There we go. So this is how it's looking up as of now. The names, it's it's like, I have to go like way zoomed out to actually get it. First, I'm gonna show you. So this is how it actually looks like. And once you understand that these are at the very top are the headings of these tables and below that are the names. So you got the idea of how things are looking up. That's great. You might be watching on the mobile devices as well. So I'm gonna zoom in again so that it's easier for us to understand what's going on even on the mobile devices. I'm gonna zoom it even more. So I think uh, that's too big. How can I fit it on my screen? Uh, there we go. A little bit more, a little bit more. I think that is all good. So let me show you what is going on uh, up here once you have seen that how these images actually look like. So first and foremost, every image that we have run so far, as we can see, we have got our LS, our hello, and all these things are going on. So every Docker container has a unique ID. This unique ID looks something like this. So this guy, this one, these are our unique ID. Whenever you run any image, this is the unique ID that you are having. Now after that, we have got this image as well. And this image is either BusyBox or Hello World, whatever you are running. So far we are having just one, but in the later on phase, I'm gonna walk you through that how we can have Nginx image or maybe MySQL image and a bunch of others node images as well. Then it comes the command. The command that we have run here is ls in this case, and then we have got sh and all these commands that are going on. The created time is also given to us how long ago you have created this image. The status is also given to us. As of now, it just says uh, exited because all of these processes got exited. None of them is constantly running as of now. Now, after that, we can see we have got ports as well. This is a very interesting thing. Right now, we have got all zero for them. Later on, we are going to work on how we can expose some of the ports from these images so that application might be running on that. 
For example, you might want to open up some certain port when you are deploying a node application into backend so that frontend can actually connect through it. So we're going to learn how we can open up some ports in the Docker application. That's going to be absolutely fun. And after that, we have got names as well. This is something different and something interesting. Whenever a Docker image is being created, a totally unique and sometimes bizarre name is given to that image. And you can call that image while running any command, either based on this unique ID, which is recommended way, but you can also point to that image using this unique and sometime bizarre name. In this case, first time when I, when I was running it, this image was pointed out using this unique ID as well as this magical Archimedes as well. So uh, Sharp uh, Hodgkin and Confident Thompson. So these are some bizarre names that you're going to see quite a lot. So now that you know more about the two commands of it, we have seen one more thing here, which is status which as of now it says exited. So what are the other phases in which my Docker image can go into? For that, we have to see another diagram, which definitely took a little bit while. Again, this exact, not exact, but yeah, very similar looking diagram is available on the Docker official documentation. I have made it a little bit modification in that so that it's easier for us to learn. By the way, you can check out on the Docker official website as well. So. This blue guy, uh, this is me or our computer that we are having. And this D hub is actually the Docker hub. I thought D hub is more awesome to say. So whenever uh, you're going to create a Docker image, what happens to its Docker image is actually mentioned in this image. So let's see how it goes on. So first and foremost, whenever you just run the command Docker pull, assuming whatever the image name is there, a Docker image is being pulled up from this Docker hub and is moved into your computer. We saw previous one of the diagram that how we can put that into the cache. So in case you saw that, uh, it might be somewhere here. So this is how we put that into the local cache, exactly what is happening up here. So moving further, uh, a Docker pull command pulls the image. Now we have seen that we were running a command which was Docker run. What it does, it just takes that cache image and moves our Docker image into the started phase, not starting, started phase, image is already up. Now this Docker run command is composed of two separate command known as Docker create and Docker start. Now these white boxes that you see around here, started, exited, created and paused, these are states in which your image can be currently in. The image, what you see here created is in the square, rest of them are in the circle, because these circles are the most common state in which your application exists. The square one is rarely, you are going to rarely see that your image actually exists in this particular phase, but still it can. So Docker create actually create an image, but it is not ready to serve you. In order to make sure that your image is ready to serve you, it should be in the Docker start phase. So either you can run a command docker create then image name, uh, maybe hello world, maybe busybox, maybe nginx. So docker create and the image name and then you run the second command which is docker start and then again the image name. Instead, we can use this uh, pink line shortcut which is docker run. So there we go, pretty simple. We have seen so far this going on. Now also, once your image is being in the started phase, it can move into either exited phase, which we just saw in the status, or it can move into the paused phase as well, or it can just go dead, because obviously after exited, it just goes dead. So in order to go into these exited, we just simply say docker stop. Again, docker start is for this one here. I can actually move it a little closer, and this one here. So docker stop, whenever you simply say docker stop and image name, or you can refer to that unique ID, or that bizarre name, your image moves into exited state. Again, when you run this command docker start, which is also there as well, again, your image goes into this started phase. Whenever I say docker start, then of course, I'm assuming after that you are mentioning the image name, MySQL, Nginx, Hello World, whatever it is. Your image can also go into variety of pause mode as well. From the started, you can simply say docker pause and it can go into the pause mode. It's not serving, but it's also not dead. It's also not exited. You can also go for docker unpause and image name to get it back into the started phase and your image will be serving again. And then of course the dead, everybody knows your image is of no use. It needs to recreate the entire stuff. 
So this is a very simplistic manner of understanding that how Docker lifecycle actually works on. Majorly, like 80 to 90%, this is what happens into a Docker lifecycle. But yes, there are a bit more pieces here and there, which I will mention as we progress into the series. If you really are enjoying the series, we definitely can go and move forward in that. And in the future, we are gonna run more about these commands. So there we go. I hope you have enjoyed this. The video was pretty detailed, a little bit longer as well, but I hope you have enjoyed it and you're gonna hit that subscribe button. That's it for this one and let's catch up in the next one.